It seems like a lot of you wish to travel back, back to the good old days of the Jurassic Park series, specifically Jurassic Park 3, where many watchers first laid their eyes on the gargantuan, terrifying and lethal monster that was Spinosaurus. Its appearance is iconic and captivated the minds, or in my case, worst nightmares, of the young kids that grew up with this film. But how does the Spinosaurus depiction compare to the modern, scientifically accurate rendition of this gorgeous yet highly ambiguous prehistoric animal? All my fellas. All my Spinosaurus aegypticus translates to Egyptian spine lizard and was the largest member of the Spinosauridae family of theropod dinosaurs. It lived around 99 to 93 and a half million years ago during the Cenomanian to the upper stages of the late Cretaceous period, and so far. It is the largest theropod dinosaur ever to have been discovered when it comes to length, coming in at a whopping 15 meters in length, with more generous estimates claiming it could grow up to around 18 meters in length at its biggest physically possible size. It was approximately 2.35 meters tall at the hip and around 4 to 4.5 meters tall at its highest point. It also weighed around 6 to 7 tons on average, so truly an absolute leviathan. <laughs> Based on the previous two videos I made, you would assume that I would bash the Jurassic Park Spinosaurus for looking like an inaccurate monster. Right? However, it is important to note that this depiction was in fact accurate for its time, which means I cannot in fairness begin to critique it for its poor design choice. Nevertheless, we will still be comparing it to the real life version. As such, let us begin. We now know that Spinosaurus was lower to the ground compared to the typical theropod stance with its hind limbs being relatively similarly sized to its forelimbs, and it had a very long, powerful, paddle-like tail. Look at the length of this animal. Just enormous. And not just the length, this massive girth. However, Jurassic Park 3 still has a lot of things on its Spinosaurus that are still accurate, such as the seriously impressive 6-7 to seven inch claw on each finger, the highly specialised crocodilian-like snout and jaws, and the iconic Marvelous, dare I say, succulent spinal sail. There are many depictions of Spinosaurus' sail, from being a perfect golden spiral like semicircle to looking like the bimodal distribution graphs I get in my lectures. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is all fine and dandy, but you haven't explained about. Shut up, clocking! Spinosaurus was a carnivorous dinosaur that primarily ate fish and other marine animals. Fossil evidence suggests this in the form of Spinosaurus tooth marks on the fossils of an Oncopristus, as well as eating large lungfish and the occasional small terrestrial animal if it ever came into its habitat. Yes, you are correct, it was primarily a fish-eating dinosaur, a piscivore. This is very evident in its highly specialised morphology. One such ability to know is its highly specialised crocodilian-like snout. Like modern crocodiles, its snout was covered in tiny holes called neurovascular openings. These were pressure receptors, and it allowed for Spinosaurus to lower the tip of its snout just below the surface of the water and detect the exact location and direction of the fish through the vibrations of their movements swimming underwater without even seeing them. And bone analysis indicates that it could shut its jaws very quickly, which was perfect for quickly snatching fast moving fish out of the water. Sorry. Uh, And this would have been aided by a snout full of 1 to 4 inch conical teeth which were designed for gripping onto slippery, struggling prey, similarly to that of teeth of modern crocodiles. Once the Spinosaurus caught its prey, it would use its exceptionally strong arms to hold its prey in place, bring it to the ground and proceed to unapologetically butcher it with its powerful arms, each coupled with 3 7 inch claws. If you think this is already pretty intimidating, well, you'd be right. But there's more. Spinosaurus had a flamboyant spinal sail on its back, 
head spinning, which is speculated to function as anything from thermoregulation cooling system to it simply being for display. Oh, and also. Interestingly, Spinosaurus actually had relatively dense bones and further analysis suggests that Spino used this as a form of buoyancy which enabled it to control how deep it could go underwater. This coupled with its webbed feet and strong paddle-like tail further reinforced the notion that this dinosaur was actually more aquatic than we once thought, suggesting that Spinosaurus could swim underwater. Hey babe, I have something to show you by the way. Oh, what is it? I'm trying to make a video right now. Oh my god, just read it first, dipshit! Okay, okay, Christ. This better be worth it. Oh, what's this? Hmm. Let's see here. Da, 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 da. New Spinosaurus paper. Anatomical analysis. Huh? Couldn't swim? What? So, the Spinosaurus paper now suggests that it wasn't fully aquatic after all. So, if you lean towards a more semi-aquatic and terrestrial build, then this would support that. Please keep in mind that there's obviously a lot of contention regarding this talking point, so take it as you will. In the typical Spinosaurus fashion, it actually has quite a tragic backstory to it. The previous segment of this video has given me a severe intracranial hemorrhaging, but we must continue. Spinosaurus aegypticus lived in the mid to early Cretaceous period of Gondwanaland in the North African Sahara region, specifically the Bahariya Formation, which in the current world is now Egypt, which at the time was actually a large network of river systems, well adapted for Spinosaurus's habitat. And it lived at the same time as other carnivores, such as Rhygopsids and the infamous Carcharodontosaurus. Spinosaurus aegypticus's remains were found in the Bahariya oasis in 1912 by an Austrian paleontologist named Richard Markograf, and the specimen was later described in 1915 by a more well-known German paleontologist called Ernst Stromer. Unfortunately, some of the remains were severely damaged during the specimen's excavation and transportation from Egypt to the Deutsches Museum in Munich, and Tragically, in 1944, every trace of the remaining bones and fossils were completely destroyed during an Allied bombing raid on the Alte Akademie Museum in Düsseldorf. Ladies and gentlemen, over 15,000 combined views and almost 500 subscribers within the span of just a couple of days. I honestly cannot fathom these numbers. This has been an absolutely incredible surprise for me. I am genuinely grateful for every single person that spent their time and attention to watch my videos. It's insane to me that each individual view is a human being who sat down and actively watched my video, maybe even subscribed, and some even took the time to leave a comment. I've been told by many of you that my style of content is very appealing and I should keep it up. Rest assured, I do not plan on leaving. I make my videos for shits and giggles and because I'm passionate about science, so to see people genuinely enjoy my goofy, wacky content means so much to me. And to each and every one of you, I give my most humbling thank you. And I don't mean it in your like typical YouTuber shallow way. I'm genuinely overwhelmed by the amount of support I've gotten. Please note though, I am currently a full-time university student, so my upload schedule may become quite inconsistent and random. However, I do believe in quality over quantity, so when I do make a video, no matter how long it takes, I will take my time to make sure it is the best piece of art that I can possibly create. And this concludes my video on the Spinosaurus, and this is also my New Year's gift to all of you. I also want to thank my girlfriend once more for her little cameo in the video. She loves doing this sort of stuff with me, and she'll pop by from time to time in my videos. Aside from all that, that is all I have for today, and I hope you have a happy new year to whoever you are and wherever you are. Until the next one.
But Sorry to interrupt the outro, but I'm here to inform you that my goofy ass man did a few fucky buckies in the previous Giga Notosaurus video that he addresses in the pinned comments of this one. Thanks again for watching, and I'll be sure to invade the next one. So happy new year, and we'll see you again soon. Bye! Bye.